so the work that we did um, in last November, a year ago, started on, we targeted yellowtail and uh, window pane because those are seen as two species that are giving us problems down here. So that information didn't get incorporated in the track because they said they hadn't seen it. They you know they gave all these excuses. So when we but we knew that in June and when the NTAP I'm on the NTAP panel and when we met in June, we knew the Grayson assessment was going to come up. The data review was going to be in September, modeling workshop in October, and the assessment in December. So that we we knew that if we target Grayson, got a, enough qualifying toes. And then they wrote the paper up that it could be incorporated into the, the September meeting. So that's what happened. We made 117 toes, killed 30,000 pounds of fish. It was 4% of the ACL, 25% of what had been landed to date. The, the work was bulletproof. And, but we knew, we knew that because I, it was with, uh, we were working with John Manderson, Mike Martin, Dave Richardson, John Hare's name is even on the paper. But These are all scientists. Yeah, all scientists from within, from NOAA. But it was people who had already been, I, I worked closely with John Manderson before on the butterfish assessment, and he already knew the process, and he already knew um, how much scrutiny something like this comes up, comes up against in an assessment. So he already knew how to, how to um, put things and make sure that we crossed every T and dotted every I and, and got everything exactly right. So we did, and they accepted the work in, in, October, in September in the data review. The modeling workshop, Dave presented the spawning stock biomass numbers that came out of that paper. And they, in, in the, after that meeting, they decided to, um, the way John Hare puts it, not, not weight as heavily, the, the work, the catch it, the detectability work that we did, and weight more heavily, the age structure stuff. It's a polite, scientific, way of saying that we're not going to use your stuff. So um, <clears throat> this just happened last Friday. The, the peer reviewers threw out the, the model that, that they came up with because it didn't, there were um, rep retrospective patterns and it, um, it didn't fit. So in the end, now they're going to use this, the spawning stock biomass numbers from the, the work that we did. So that's the reason why I'm still encouraged and I think that it, although John says there was no, he had no influence. I, somebody had some influence somewhere. It wasn't me writing a letter to Pat Sullivan. It was somebody higher up had something to do with it, and um, that's so that's where it stands. So it's we were all about ready to give up if the if the work wasn't going to get used, but now it looks like it it will. So I think this is going to set a precedent, and which was our hope originally <coughs> that. And I get I have another ten or fifteen days of work to go fill in all the gaps on all the species that we don't have enough toes on. So um, I'm not sure when that's going to be. But Dave's writing up a bigger paper, so the, the which piece is just a small part of the detectability number on the Bigelow gear. And I think that's the biggest uh, the biggest the biggest target for us right now. And um, to get that. But the, the challenge isn't doing the work. That's the, that's the easy part. The, the challenge has been getting it to be incorporated into the assessment. Getting yeah. them to read it. And, and yeah, and I think that's, that's going forward, that's going to be the hardest thing. All, all the stuff that I've done, nine out of ten projects that I've done, trying to influence this, the assessment is really the biggest challenge. They, they're very resistant to using any any new information, any any collaborative, cooperative information. So that's that's a bigger struggle. The work is the easy part in relative terms.